Red Balloon is the newest boss to BTD6 and he has some special properties. To start, he's completely immune to an entire tower type and this immunity changes with every skull. This rotation is always the same and goes primary, military, magic, and then support. This even affects paragons, but because the rotation is the same every time, we can easily play around it. Another thing about Red Balloon is that he has a layer of ceramic armor that regenerates at every skull. This armor also inherits the tower type immunity and while this armor is intact, Rock Balloons will start spawning at the beginning of the track. These little guys can be very annoying to deal with if you're unprepared. They spawn every few seconds until you destroy the armor. These rock balloons have tons of health, cannot be slowed down, inherit the tower type immunity from Dread Balloon, and most importantly, are prioritized over everything else when you set your monkeys to strong. Luckily, these balloons are considered bosses, so towers that are good against Dread Balloon aren't typically good for clearing out these rocky boys. But once Dread Balloon's armor is destroyed, the rock balloons will stop spawning and you can start working on his health. When he has no armor, he moves twice as fast and has lead balloon properties, so if you're running monkeys without lead popping power, make sure to get a mib or a glue strike so they can help out. Now that we have all of his properties out of the way, we can walk through how to beat him. And I'll be going through his elite version because if you can do that, you can definitely do normal. At the start, we'll just farm like we would any other boss. Either get Ben or Geraldo down and start placing farms. You can opt for just building marketplaces or go the bank route. Either is fine, it just comes down to what you prefer. The big difference though is that you want to have a lead to gold alchemist by round 26. Now you may be wondering, but Josh, leads don't come until round 28. Why would I need this alchemist two rounds early? Well, there is one more thing that Dread Balloon changes, and it's the type of balloons that spawn. On screen are all the modifications, but the one that we care about is that all zebra balloons are replaced with leads, and we're going to take advantage of that. In fact, there are so many leads in these rounds that by round 40, we'll have already popped over 100 of them. Anyway, we'll get back on track with normal farming by getting a balloon trap by round 34, as that's when you can start filling up traps really fast. With a lead to gold and a balloon trap, you'll be profiting tons of money and have a pretty solid defense. Here, you can opt for either getting more marketplaces or upgrading your lead to gold to a rubber to gold. Both will work. But this brings us to round 40, where you have some options. You want to get down a sticky bomb ninja, as that destroys the first tier, but what you add on to this depends on your play style. If you want to keep your marketplaces, then you can opt for spamming mob maulers. But if you play like me, you can sell most of your farms and get attack zone and glue strike on top of the sticky bomb ninja. Both will pop the boss, they're just pros and cons to each one. The mob mauler way takes longer to pop the boss, and you need to worry about the rock balloons that come out. Out, but you keep your farm so you make money during the fight. The second way shreds the boss and rock balloons in just a few rounds, letting you get back to farming early. One big thing to note is that primary type monkeys are great for dread balloon because the rock balloons don't spawn right away, meaning there are way less that are immune to primary monkeys than any other type. After we beat the boss, upgrade your lead to gold to a rubber to gold if you haven't done that already, and you can get another balloon trap. Now, the biggest tip I can give for any boss is that you want to spend as little money on defenses as possible as that'll let you farm more. Unfortunately, this changes with what map the boss is on, so I'll just say that a never miss ace or an overdrive is almost always a good option. We'll spend the rest of our money on either 420 farms or 023 marketplaces depending on the map. If you have a ton of space, I usually get marketplaces, but if we're cramped, then I'll go for BRFs. This will bring us to the tier 2 boss and we'll get a mad plus something else. I like either going in Avatar of Wrath or Attack Zone. Either are fine, just make sure that they have lead popping power and you'll need some extra rock balloon cleanup for the attack zone option when they're immune to military monkeys as the mad won't be able to help out. The one nice thing about the mad is that it deals tons of damage to these rock balloons because they have boss properties. So the mad is super strong against Dread Balloon as it counters him and his minions. Once we pop the second tier, we'll want to farm as hard as possible. This usually involves a banana central and BRFs, but once again, it's map dependent. So I'm going to focus on what towers you should get to pop the final few tiers. The third tier is nice and simple. I like to get a mad and a flying fortress to take down the first skull and while that is happening work towards an apex plasma master or glaive dominus either will work but the dart paragon is usually better as you can easily make it a degree 30. but both of these guys will take care of the rest of the boss and rock balloons in fact you can sell the mad once dread balloon is no longer immune to primary monkeys and use that money for more farming we we'll want to keep the flying fortress however as that guy is farming us pops for our next paragon after the third tier you'll just farm away and grind pops on that flying fortress if you're satisfied with your first paragon's degree you can keep it around for the next tier but if you got a super weak one like I did, feel free to sell it and farm harder. It's pretty important that this guy is strong as it'll need to carry you through the phase where Dread Balloon is immune to military monkeys. But the fourth tier shouldn't be too bad as you just need a flying doom ship, a super brittle, a cripple mob, and any other non-military type paragon. As long as the other paragon can handle the rock balloons and Dread Balloon when it's immune to military monkeys, you'll beat this tier pretty easily. And for the fifth tier, you'll just need to sell all your farms, get down the best paragons you can muster, and any support they may need. I had an ace, ninja, engineer, and dart paragon with a VTSG and all the support, but this will depend on the map and how much you are able to farm. But with this, you should easily be able to crush Dreadbloon.